With this course, I hope you will get many benefits on how to install, configure and maintain your Cisco Wireless SAN controllers. If you have any questions, just send me a quick direct message and you can also write to the Q&A section. Thank you for watching. On Chapter 1, we will go over installation processes and initial Cisco Wireless SAN controller configuration. You will understand how to set up your virtual environment for virtual wireless SAN controller and then you will understand how to do the necessary configurations for your virtual wireless SAN controller installation. Then we will do AROS GUI setup overview and deal with all the wireless SAN controller menus, why they are there and how we can use them to do our obtained results. VLC ports and interfaces will be dealt with and why do we need those ports, why do we have those specific interfaces and also you will understand port aggregation for Cisco Wireless and Controller. On Chapter 2, we will go over centralized Cisco Wireless and Controller architecture. How Cisco Wireless and Architecture operates, what is CapWeb Tunnel, how CapWeb Tunnels operate and what are two different types of CapWeb Tunnels, MC and MA functions for your wireless and architecture, point of presence and point of attachment functions. Then we will go over access point discovery process. What is the cap up discovery process and how access points know which access point which wireless and controller to join and then we will go over access point failover process. How we can prioritize failover and how we can choose which wireless and controller for our access point to join initially. On Chapter 3, we will go over different access point modes of operation. The local mode, WIPS enhanced local mode, flex connect mode, how flex connect works, office extent mode, why do we need that, monitor mode, how we can use it, rogue detector mode, sniffer mode, and bridge mode. And we will also understand how flex plus bridge mode which is the combination of flex connect mode and bridge mode. Then we will understand SE connect mode and we will go over what it, what it, why it is different from the sniffer mode. So we will understand each different access point modes and we will also do a lab related with how we can configure it and how we can choose different modes of operation. On chapter 4 we will go over Radio Resource Management Why do we need RM features? What are different RM features such as TPC, DCA and coverage hole detection? We will understand how we can do the RF groupings and why we need it. We will go over clean air technology provided by Cisco and related with that we will understand air quality index. We will also go over and see what band select is, how it can give us benefits related to using 5 GHz band and we will understand client link technology that is provided by Cisco to give higher benefits for newer capable devices. In Chapter 5 we will go over wireless and security options but before configuring everything we will understand why do we need authentication and what kind of benefits it will give us. We will talk about 802.1x overview, what is the packet, over, packet flow for your e-process and then we will do labs related with WPA authentication modes, different wireless and authentication methods, wireless and with 802.1x authentication, wireless and with local EAP and wireless and with local web authentication will be dealt in this chapter. So this is an important chapter for your wireless and security and your wireless and configuration because you will see all the options for your security purposes and you will see how you can select AAA servers for your wireless and. So in chapter 6 we will talk about roaming. Different roaming types and mobility groups and mobility domains will be our main concern. What is intracontroller is, what intracontroller is, what intercontroller roaming happens, why it happens, what are different mobility types, 
for mobility groups and domains and how many wireless and controllers will be in mobility groups and domains will be our concern. Then we will understand layer 2 dynamic roaming and what makes dynamic roaming a layer 3 one. We will understand wireless gas networking, auto anchor and we will deal with mobility anchors. We will do all the configurations on our wireless and controllers and we will put foreign controllers to anchors and let them communicate throughout a mobility group. On chapter 7 we will deal with FlexConnect deployments. We went over what FlexConnect is but now we will understand deeply what FlexConnect architecture provides us. We will understand different operational modes such as connected mode and standalone mode and we will go over different FlexConnect states in terms of authentication, in terms of switching, what has central switching means, what has local switching means. We will go over them and discuss their benefits. Then we will understand why do we need FlexConnect groups. We will go over different FlexConnect network configuration needs on your wired network and we will do labs related with configuring FlexConnect groups, doing the wireless stand to VLAN mappings on your FlexConnect and also we will understand how to convert a local mode access point to FlexConnect and do the necessary configurations for local switching and we can also understand local authentication. On chapter 8, we will deal with wireless and controller maintenance and troubleshooting. We will understand how wireless and controller licensing works, what are different licenses, how we can transfer the license, how we can load the license on your graphical user interface. We will learn. We are the update process and how we can upgrade images for access points, wireless and controllers, and even your FlexConnect APs. We will also discuss FlexConnect AP smart upgrade process. We will deal with wireless and controller backup and restore processes for your configurations. We will also go over CLI configs for each backup and restore process. Then we will understand wireless and controller third-party troubleshooting tools. Why do we need them? What kind of different third-party troubleshooting tools do we have? And wireless and controller troubleshooting tools that are on your VLC. The GUI logs, the CLI commands, we will all discuss them. And lastly, we will understand what kind of errors we can have and what kind of different errors and issues we can have on our wireless lens. Hello and welcome to Cisco Wireless and Controller Training. In this course, you will be able to get all necessary information to be the best in your Cisco wireless and controller. You will be able to understand each theory behind every topic and then you will see how they are configured on real devices. You will learn how to implement certain topics on your Cisco VLC and I hope you will get better at your job which will involve Cisco wireless devices. You will be able to analyze and troubleshoot problems because now you will know each topic and you will know how each configuration parameter works in the background and hopefully you will have great understanding for your daily profession. So let's go and investigate each chapter one by one.